Mina, konnichiwa. It's afternoon. Jesus Freaking Gamer here. Joshua chapter 5, verse 2. At that time, the Lord said to Joshua, Make flint knives for yourself and circumcise the sons of Israel again the second time. So Joshua made flint knives for himself and circumcised the sons of Israel at the hill of the foreskins. What a name. And this is the reason why Joshua circumcised them. All the people who came out of Egypt, who were males, all the men of war, had died in the wilderness on the way after they had come out of Egypt. For all the people who came out had been circumcised, but all the people born in the wilderness on the way as they came out of Egypt had not been circumcised. <clears throat> First thing that's interesting to me is how at one point in Exodus, Moses was actually endangered. His life was in danger. The Lord was seeking to kill him because he had not circumcised his sons. Um, it's the story of and his wife Zipporah circumcised his sons through the foreskins at her husband's feet and Moses' feet and then the Lord didn't try to kill him anymore. Very interesting story. I know a lot of you haven't heard that. It's in Exodus somewhere. Google it. Check it out. So he forgets to circumcise his kids, almost gets himself killed before he's even able to go into Egypt to deliver the people at God's command. And then the next generation that comes up doesn't get circumcised. I wonder in my mind, how the heck does that work? The man's life was in danger at one point because he didn't circumcise his children. And then the nation which he is leading by the Lord's grace and by the Lord's hand, he doesn't lead that nation to circumcise themselves? What the heck, Moses? That's observation number one. Observation number two, this circumcision didn't happen until after they had crossed the Jordan, until after the Lord had made a way, sent them on the way to their calling that he had called them to. They've already crossed the Jordan. They, they've already set up the stones. And it's at this point where God says to Joshua, okay, make flint knives for yourselves and make sure this congregation is circumcised. The circumcision didn't happen until after they crossed the Jordan. I find the timing really interesting and in how that, that part of the covenant, circumcising all males, that part of the covenant hadn't been fulfilled, and yet God still took them across the Jordan. He didn't take them all the way into the Promised Land. They didn't start conquering yet, but they did cross the Jordan. And it makes me think of how, again, reflecting on my own life, a lot of the time circumcision speaks of the flesh nature and so when you are circumcised it cuts basically you're cutting off the flesh nature you're going in you're making a covenant with God and I'm not getting into the whole circumcision versus uncircumcision debate I'm not doing that um, that that can be another topic for another time but this amount of obedience while required they still crossed the Jordan before they had to do it but they weren't able to go into the promised land until they were circumcised so God, they, were, they were with God. They were working with God despite that imperfection. He was moving in them. He was using them. He was moving them in the right direction towards the goal he had for them, towards the promised land. And this one very basic element of obedience had not been fulfilled. Just a little bit more encouragement to say, hey, even when you're imperfect, even when you don't have it all, even when you don't get it, you can still move forward in the Lord and he will still guide you and he will still lead you despite that uncircumcised flesh. In our, in our New Testament scenario, our uncircumcised hearts. And I know I have a lot of things that I still struggle with. I'm sure pretty much all of my viewers do too. If there's one of you who doesn't struggle with anything, please type it in the comments so I can call you a liar to your face, as much as the internet will allow me to do in the comments section of YouTube. So be encouraged. The Lord can use you even when you're not perfect, even where you are. You can start making a journey to your promised land, to God's calling, in the middle of things not being perfect, in the middle of things not being right. God still loves you, He's still using you, and He will still move you forward. And when the time does come, He will call for that obedience. He'll call for that sacrifice, for that crucifying of the flesh. He calls for it right now, but even if, even if you are a bit stiff-necked, even if you are a bit disobedient, whether ignorantly or not ignorantly. I'm assuming, considering they just got the law, they were not ignorant of what should they should have done. Despite that, God was still backing them up. So be strong and be of good courage, church, um, to anyone who's watching this. God's still for you, and he can still use you. Just 
Keep your ears open for the time when he says, okay, son, daughter, this has to go. Love you guys very much. God bless.